Good morning. Welcome to the service of worship here at Central Presbyterian Church. We are delighted to have you with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Friends in Christ, let's join together in prayer. God of love and grace and mystery, thank you for bringing us close to you. Lift our hearts toward you this day as we prepare for worship. And let us always bring one another a little closer, widening our circles and letting each other belong to one another. We pray this in your holy name. Alleluia. Amen.
Christ came into the world so that each one of us could know the amazing, unbelievable peace. Peace that comes to us when we don't deserve it. Peace that comes in the middle of life's storms. Peace comes in days of joy and gladness. This peace is a gift for us to have, but also a gift to share. And so I invite you to share the signs of peace with one another, to stand, to wave, to give a peace sign, and to enjoy Christ's peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you.
Thank you, Charity. It is amazing to be reminded of God's grace. Well, I think first of all, in our announcements today, I'd like to give a warm welcome home to our soloist this morning, Hope Covera. If you want to give her a little wave or a clap. Hope graduated a few weeks ago from Ithaca College, and we hope to be seeing a lot more of you in like singing for us. What do you think, Hope? OK. I take that as a definite yes. Um, we are very pleased that Pastor Steele is away on vacation. He's actually coming home tomorrow if you need him. He's been in Philadelphia seeing his brother and his whole family getting together. Um, for those of you who have brought things in for Vacation Bible School, thank you. And we still need toilet paper and paper towel rolls. So if you don't mind saving those for us, we would really appreciate it. We just need the center part at the center of the roll. Those are actually really hard to come by these days, so we would love them. Um, and if you'd like to be involved in either Vacation Bible School or we're getting started with our pop up mission trips um, for pop-up mission catch emily on your way out emily can you give us a little wave and for vacation bible school you can always talk to me in fact i'm always happy to talk about vacation bible school um, our flowers this morning are in memory of tom ritchie we'll be celebrating his life this afternoon in a memorial service. He passed away in January. And many of you know Tom is a longtime member of the congregation. He sat right over here by the Woodberries. And um, we miss him very much. And we feel like, especially the black and orange flowers of his alma mater um, are bringing him here in service today. And so we're celebrating his life today. Um, I think that concludes our announcements for this morning. Um, let us go ahead and prepare our hearts to hear God's word. I want to let you know that this passage of scripture is the first piece of scripture I ever preached on and is a big part of why I became a minister and left teaching behind to do it. To me, the story of this woman who was marginalized and excluded, and yet who is so strong and amazing and persistent, is a story of inclusion that we should pay attention to. It's a story of inclusion that honors her persistence and strength and grit while challenging each of us to make our circles a little wider. When I read this morning, I want you to listen for that persistence and grit. So Jesus has just gotten off the boat um, and there's the whole thing with the pigs. That's my son's favorite passage in scripture. And let's listen and hear God's word. And a large crowd followed Jesus and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhage for 12 years. She had endured much under her many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt that her body was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, do you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. 
he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Jesus' response to this woman is a powerful testimony of his opinion of her. You see, usually when Jesus is talking about the poor disciples, they don't get that kind of praise, do they? Even Jesus' allies and other people of faith don't get any more praise than this nameless woman in the crowd. As we listen to the story, I think it is important to note that she should probably not have been in that busy marketplace at all. Her medical condition would have kept her largely separated for her community from the, her community for these past 12 years. And far from being an ancient problem, women all over the world are still separated from society periodically or permanently because of our biology. In fact, UNICEF, the World Bank, and the World Health Organization have all prioritized helping women to be included during times of periodic exclusion. Because women and girls are missing too much from school, from the marketplace, from their community. And they identify this as a major barrier to the development and advancement of our world. We need the gifts of women and girls. It's been too long that they have been excluded. And this woman in her story was probably really used to being excluded and separated for the past 12 years. Her presence was largely taboo. So how does Jesus treat this marginalized, separated, but incredibly persistent and brave woman? Does he allow her to slip by unnoticed like she was hoping, staying at the margins, mostly unseen? Does he chastise her for not following the rules? No. Neither of those things. He puts her at the center of everything. He stops everything and everyone, and he says, you are my daughter. And if that wasn't enough for us, he goes on to say in front of everyone that her faith has made her well. She is the most honorable, the most included, a daughter whose faith has brought healing to herself and to those around her. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Every time I hear the story, I find myself flipping to the next page, hoping for a little more. I want to know more about the strong and persistent woman who dared to get the healing that she knew she needed, the one who reached out and touched Jesus' cloak. I want to know what happens next. I imagine her in the tradition of Shipra and Pua, those midwives back in Genesis who saved all those children. I imagine her becoming a famous midwife, bringing faith and healing to everyone she met, or using those amazing powers of advocacy and persistence. Wait, that sounds a little bit like some of the lawyers I know in this congregation who advocate tirelessly for us all. I at least want her name, but I don't get any of that. I don't hear what happens next, and so I get to imagine it. I get to look for how that story continues to unfold. 
Because even though I don't know how this nameless woman's story unfolds, she does remind me of another amazing and strong woman who was marginalized for her biology and her disability, who went on to find and bring healing into our world. I am talking about Temple Grandin, a renowned researcher in the area of the humane treatment of cows. So you might not have heard of Temple, but I'm guessing you've probably tasted her work because over half of the beef produced in America now comes from humane, clean, and safe facilities that were designed by Temple Grandin. Now, if any of you know cow people, and I've had the pleasure of meeting more than my fair share, to get them to agree on anything, that takes persistence. Temple's ideas have revolutionized her industry, but they were not always accepted. As a woman, first of all, her ideas weren't accepted, but especially as a woman with autism. People discounted her voice. They disregarded her ideas. It took persistence. It took her reaching out to take what she knew she needed as healing in this world. It took advocates and good research and little, tiny wins over and over and over again before people could hear her instead of their own prejudices. You see, Temple Grandin did not speak until she was four years old. As a child with autism, and learning disabilities, school was never easy for her. She struggled socially and academically, but her family encouraged her and helped her to see her strengths, focusing on this amazing connection that she had with animals. Grandin has gone on not only to make all of our beef taste a little better as a transformational force in the food supply, she was actually named last year as one of the top 10 professors in the whole United States. CSU is beaming with pride. They've never had that honor before. And they say for sure, Temple Grandin is the most famous professor they have ever had. She is also an amazing voice and advocate for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And she advocates for the same strength-based approach to disability that she received as a child. Because of her family and a handful of teachers, because they focused on her gifts, Grandin says, she could see them too. Persistent, she allowed her gifts to develop and she could finally share them with the world. Grandin encourages us all to look for the gifts and strengths of the people around us, our friends, strangers, and also people on the margins of our community. Because according to Grandin, we all need those gifts, whether it's changing how food is produced in our country or solving the big problems of the environment, of education, all of the complicated problems that we have means that we need to understand and benefit from the diverse and amazing gifts that each one of us has to offer. Grandin says that these gifts will heal our world. Going back to our passage, daughter, your faith has made you well. Hmm. I'm guessing that none of us sitting here this morning praying full of faith could offer the same healing that Jesus does. I'm sorry, even if we could shake hands after the service, if you shake hands with me, I'm not going to be able to fix whatever ails you. Jesus could do that. But for the rest of us, sometimes these healing stories leave us a little cold, a little on the outside wondering where we fit in. But 
This story offers us a way in with that word, daughter. Jesus' words give us a role to play in this healing. Like Jesus, we can offer a deep, purposeful, and important sense of belonging to one another. Like Jesus, we can bring people from the outside to the center of our circles. Last week, when we celebrated all of those wonderful graduations, Kevin described this church as a family. And I think I can see what he means. Like amazing sons and daughters, our deacons care for us every Sunday morning, and most especially when we come together to grieve or to celebrate. Back when we had Take 10, and hopefully when we can have it again, Susan Peterson shows us that when you take fresh pineapple and you slice it and serve it, that not only are you serving the most delicious treat, but it makes us all feel so cared for and loved, like a little kitchen mom. Susan takes care of each of us. We can see it if we're ever here on a Tuesday night and we get to see the amazing kids coming together for eport. Big sisters and brothers sharing with little sisters and brothers over a story or a math problem. I wonder if every time we come together and listen together and find Christ in the center of the relationship, if we also start to belong to one another, if we start to be a kind of spiritual family to one another. When Leah Griffith, who heads up our Hands on Mission, comes every year into our confirmation class to talk about why and how we do mission in the church, she focuses on the idea of belonging. According to Leah, it's central here at Central that we belong to one another. That's why we do what we do because we're a part of Summit, because we're a part of New Jersey, because we are a part of this amazing country. That's why we sit down for a meal together and swap stories and play with each other's kids during Family Promise. That's why we share a cup of hot soup on a cold night with Bridges. It's because we belong to one another. It's not one-sided, Leah explains. Instead, we enter into a mutual relationship of caring that strengthens us all. Leah tells us that when we belong together, we are stronger than we are on our own. I wonder if that's why Jesus uses that word, daughter. Maybe he wants to see us to see what it means to belong like that. Another one of those relationships of family and belonging are the surrogate parents that step forward each year with our young people as part of that same confirmation class. Each year, mentors come along and they do assignments and projects with the kids, all the while asking this essential question. Where do your passions and the world's needs meet? Because that's where God is calling you. Now, this year, the kids felt strongly called toward sports. Now, I'm not a terribly sporty person, and I hate to say, but I was like, how is Jesus in the middle of sports? I don't get it. But trusting the kids and trusting their mentors, I let that story unfold too. And this spring, six of our young people and their mentors 
focused on sharing their love of sports with kids who might otherwise be left out. See, the kids understand that all of those camps and clinics and coaches that they get so that they can be excellent in their sport, but they're expensive. All of that gear that they have sitting on a shelf or in their attic or basement, it's expensive. And it can keep kids who'd like to play from being able to participate. So collecting equipment and drilling skills and spending time together. Central's Confirmands found their faith strengthened by sharing what they loved. As simple as that. They shared their passion with someone else, nurtured by parents and leaders and mentors. These kids knew that they belong to one another and to this church. And they were able, like big sisters and brothers, to expand that circle of belonging to include a whole nother group of young people into a community that they love. That story continues. I know the next page of that story. Those same kids are working on a camp this summer and clinics throughout the fall that will be here at the church for our community. We will all get to see how that story unfolds. And we will get to see how big their circles can grow. In this passage, it feels like Jesus might be asking us all to consider the power that we have to heal the world. That Jesus might be asking us all, like this woman, to consider our strengths, our abilities, and to bring them to this place where we belong to each other and to God, it feels like Jesus might be asking us how we too can bring people into the center. We see how powerful it can be when we can engage and connect and to spend a little time together. We see what our young people can do with their mentors after a year of confirmation. I wonder if they could be guiding us all to this kind of innovation, these kinds of chances to expand our circle. Because I see every week that there's no end to what God is calling us to do. I see in the work that you do in the church, in the community, all the different ways that we are called to be sisters and brothers, daughters and sons, each with our own individual gift, some who lead us in worship and art, some who can see the pain of the world and who know how to heal it, and others who find joy and friendship in those sports and games, and still others who with the persistence, like the woman from our story, who can help us bring our ideas and passions into light, into the world, to help us to bring our passions to the world's needs. This world has a lot of needs. This community has a lot of needs. But this community, this world, also has a lot of strengths. When we can help to connect them, that is kingdom work. When we can help to draw our circles a little wider, that is kingdom work. We can make a place that's wide enough for everyone to stand shoulder to shoulder. Sisters and brothers in Christ, mothers and fathers in Christ, sons and daughters in Christ, there's no end to what we do when we belong to one another, when we belong to Christ, when we belong to the world around us. Let's continue to draw the circle wide.
Thank you so much for bringing that song to life for us. That song was written by Mark Miller, who's right here in our community. Many of us know Mark. And I think it really encapsulates the way that we can see the good, the strong and the beautiful in one another as we belong to one another in Christ. Let us pray. God of grace and wonder, who is so big and so amazing and so strong, we are grateful that you are also as close as a touch, as near as the wind on our cheek. We are so grateful that you stand side by side with us through your Holy Spirit this day. We ask that you would make us brave and give us eyes to see the strengths of each other. Help us to see and name those gifts, those strengths, so that each one of us can know how we can share our gifts. God of grace and God of mercy and God of love, we ask that you bring our strengths to those places where there is suffering. Loving God, be especially with those affected by the collapse of that building in Miami. For families who are hoping to find news of lost loved ones. We pray for leaders and engineers and architects who can keep our communities safer, who need to do better. God of love and God of grace, we pray for those places in our world that are full of unrest and terror. We ask for the strengths of peace, of community. We pray for Israel and Palestine. 
We pray today where there is war and rumors of war, that you would make us persistent and brave enough to call out, to reach across, to care, to belong. And God of grace and God of love and God of mercy, in our own community, where there are people who are hungry, let us bring food. Where there are people who cannot find a place to live, let us open our hearts and our homes and our community to find a place for them. And God of love and God of grace, within our own circles, let us smile and recognize the gifts that you have given to us. Let us celebrate them together. And pray this in your holy name. Alleluia. Amen. When Christ walked among us, he called us son, daughter, and he taught us to pray the words of the Lord's Prayer, words where we get to call out to God as Father. Let us pray those words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning I talked a lot about our gifts, about recognizing them and naming them for each other and sharing them. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the ways that you support ministry here at Central by rolling up your sleeves and helping out, by bringing in eyeglasses and toilet paper rolls, by giving financially. Every prayer that you utter goes to God's ears. Every work that you do strengthens God's ministry on earth. Every gift that you give is a gift for this community, for this kingdom work that we get to do. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of our ministry and life here at Central. And please, as you leave, there are places where you can leave an offering, or you can, I think as many of us do, give online. If you're not sure how to do that, you can ask, you can call Evelyn in the office and ask, but it's on our website at Give Plus. And thank you. Thank you for your amazing faithfulness and love and care. Amen. Oh, and now you can pull out your, your song sheet. And this is a song that celebrates the friendship that we all have in Jesus. We'll sing together with hope's help. What a friend we have in Jesus. and
Christ, sisters and brothers in Christ. As we go out today, let's remember that. That as friends in Christ, that we are sisters and brothers to everyone we meet. And let's work together to make our circles a little bit wider. And so, may God, who loved you enough to create this beautiful world, may God live in your hearts, strengthening you for every good deed, strengthening you for every friendship, strengthening you for every gift, every action, every smile that you get. May God be with you and stay with you now and always. Alleluia. Amen.